the webinar. I'm Ben Newman. I'm your host as always. And the time is 16 minutes past 2 p.m. CEST, so you will be in summertime. Um, a little late start, and just making sure everything's working okay. We had a few technical difficulties earlier, uh, but those are resolved now. As always, you can uh, communicate with me via the chat box here. Uh, so the date's the 21st of May, and um, uh, we're going to uh, be focusing on the, uh, the US unemployment claims data, which is coming up in 10 minutes' time. Now, uh, this often uh, provides us very good, um, very good opportunity to place trades. So we're just going to see how that pans out. I'm not rush into anything this morning. Um, unfortunately, we missed due to uh, difficulty. We missed the, the huge gain on the GBP when retail sales figures were released in the UK. Um, and uh, that caused this movement to occur, which I'm going to show you now. Uh, so this movement here by the um, by the pound, which has continued on down, and we did have some trades placed uh, with the euro, um, which uh, which didn't uh, didn't go away. But the ones we placed uh, with the pound against the yen uh, all came in. So we we just had to follow the pound this morning. Really, that was where the opportunity was, and hopefully. Um, any of you that were watching it managed to pick that up and sort of follow what the pound was doing uh, throughout this morning. GBP, JPY, let's have a look here. There we go. So we can see that that has been consistently gaining as well. And if we look at the GBP, USD, it's probably going to be a very similar story. There we go. So, um, so this afternoon, uh, there is room for the US dollar to come back and start gaining if the uh, results are positive <coughs> for the unemployment claims. So, uh, uh, we're just hold fire for that. So I'm going to methodically go through. Now the Australian US dollar uh, trend has become really erratic. It's very up and down. So this is one at the moment we just want to avoid. Look how flat it is and it's really moving up and down. There are different strategies to deal with that kind of fluctuation, but they uh, carry much higher risk. So um, uh, very difficult to get it uh, to get it right. So we're going to ignore that for now. GBP. Uh, let's have a look at so the, the pound been driving this consistently down most of the day. So this one I'm going to turn on, turn the signals on for this. Um, we want to look for a turnaround by the euro. Uh, having said that, let's have a look at an H1 chart. Yeah, so look at that. Um, pound been consistently strong for uh, most of the week, in fact. So um, a euro turnaround is uh, is on the cards, and we just need to see uh, really when that's going to happen. What we uh, what we know is that tomorrow uh, there's quite a few events uh, happening that are going to affect that euro. In fact, the German business climate meeting in the morning, um, and then we've got the, uh, uh, the European Central Bank president speaking at 3:30 in the afternoon my time. Uh, so that that's, that should provide much more positivity for the euro. So I'm going to leave that on because if the euro does start start to turn. Uh, we're in a position where we can start trading that then, uh, so we'll wait for signals for that. Euro JPY, let's have a look. So the Euro being quite strong against the Yen, but the Yen even now is uh, driving uh, against the Euro. Um, not a trend really that I'm too interested in at the moment. So uh, we'll, we'll just keep an eye on that um, uh, for the upcoming day or so really, I think is... Uh, then the Euro USD, we've seen the Euro has been strrong, now the USD taking over. Let's have a look at a three day chart on that and see where we're at with it. There we go. Um, so it's been at almost the same level, uh, quite up and down, but almost at the same level for some time now. Um, we changed that about 10 15, I don't really want that to turn on. We can see the US dollar is starting to gain, but it's not really one that's, uh, that's catching my attention at the moment. GBP Swiss. Again, the pound um, overall uh, very dominant uh, against this Swiss franc. So, I'm look, uh, yeah, so it really is. The pound's in a very accelerated position now, um, and that should provide good opportunity when it changes direction. So, we just need to wait for that change. GBP, JPY, we had a look at, again, let's have a look at an H1 chart. Um, and uh, I know. Uh, Barak, um, you mentioned earlier that, uh, that I, I go too fast with these. What I try and do is I try and state the, uh, the currency pair that I'm looking at and then go through the different trends to analyse them. Then we look to uh, set up our brokers accordingly so that we're ready to place trade when 
uh, the, the, uh, the relevant movement occurs. So looking at a three-day view on this and the, uh, the pound really very strong against the yen, overall just dominating it. Um, again, so we turn the signals on, we wait for this to see a change of direction. We get an M5 chart. So yeah, very dominant indeed. So we just turn the signals on for that. The GBP USD, um, very similar situation. So we turn that on again, we're waiting for a turn, and that may happen uh, in the next nine minutes when the uh, when the US dollar opens. Let's just have a look at an H1 chart. There we go. See how much it gained today. It's been fairly flat for the rest of the week, and that just shows really how strong the pound has been because the US dollar has had its moments as well. Uh, so it's, it's worth keeping an eye on that as well, and I think. Um, uh, when uh, New York opens, we'll, have, we'll be in a position where we can start trading that. So, um, just looking through the, the different events that are occurring, and, and uh, today the unemployment claims obviously coming up fairly soon. They've been positive for the last three months. Then we've got flash manufacturing purchasing managers index on that, um, and that's occurring a bit later. And then we've got existing home sales and the Philadelphia uh, Federal Manufacturing in Index as well. So um, they're coming up a bit later on, so we have got some other events. But at the moment, our focus needs to be on uh, the upcoming event, which is the uh, unemployment claims data being released in eight minutes' time. Um, the uh, New Zealand US dollar, let's have a look at that. This is very similar to the Aussie dollar, really don't want to entertain that at all. Worth looking to see where it's been though. Yeah, so very. Um, the, the US dollar has been driving this trend down uh, for some time now. So these are due a turnaround as well, but I don't think it's going to be today. I think that will probably occur uh, possibly tomorrow when we see the US dollar weaken. Now, the uh, USD Canadian was providing really a good opportunity yesterday. Let's have a look at that. There we go. So the Canadian dollar drove that trend down. Now the US dollar picking it up again, so we'll see again what happens with that. So I've got a few trends to go out. This is a really good one, um, and uh, there's nothing to suggest that the Canadian dollar will um, uh, will gain any strength. So, so with that in mind, I think we're in a, a good position to start looking at this for uh, for trades. Uh, it's been going up for let's have a look. So since this morning, for a good few hours now. Um, and it's, it looks like it's continuing to do so. Uh, so this is one that, that probably we can, in fact, I'm going to put it on my lower uh, platforms here just so that you can have a look at it. Let's have a look at a four hour chart. We can see how consistently this has been rising. It's still going up. So uh, we'll look to place a trade on this in a little while. I, I want to see what happens when the uh, unemployment claims data is released. Uh, we'll just see how that affects things against the Canadian. If it's very negative, it could be that this trend starts coming down. Um, it's certainly seeing some very good uh, movement at the moment in favour of the US dollar. So, uh, as I say, I'm going to get these teed up so that we can place a trade on them if we, if we need to. Um, and as always, just place enough time on your trades. Okay, I'm setting these up. Look at that. That movement really is very consistent indeed. I'm just going to have a look at an M1 chart. This is just continuing to rise. And my view on this is that probably we could place, we can't on this one. It's not letting us place a shorter trade now. So uh, my view on this is that this is going to carry on rising. And it is doing so. So I'm going to place some trades on this. USD Canadian, and let's just see if we can uh, get some sort of. Is it letting me place that? No. So I want to make sure that I'm capitalising on this movement because it is a significant movement that's happening at the moment. Um, but often they'll come back. Uh, so I just want to see what happens really at um, New York opening. But a couple of trades placed on this. Um, they're quite high risk because we don't know what's going to happen at, in five minutes' time. But certainly at the moment, the US dollar looks like it's going to be uh, continued to, to dominate this uh, this trend here. Um, so uh, 
just getting these uh, teed up so that we've got the trades to place. Now, it's up to you whether you replicate those trades. I mean, don't worry if you happen, haven't, because I think we want to wait, really. I might have been a bit hasty with these ones, but um, there's some good movement there that I wanted to capitalise on. Um, and we'll just see if that continues. If not, we'll have the, trade, uh, the, the trades the other way once um, New York opens. But we can see at the moment if I can capitalise on this movement. We can see already the US dollar starting to come back. And that suggests that, I'm uh, oh, sorry, the US dollar is starting to drop a little bit. And that suggests that it will be strong once New York opens. So uh, we'll just keep an eye on that. Quarter of Finance. Um, Look at this against the, the yen as well. The US dollar really showing a lot of strength here now. So that's back down 15. I'm going to turn these on. Um, now the, the pound that has been has been very strong throughout today. Look at that, and it still is. It's not it's not made an effect on the it's not made an effect on that, or the US dollar hasn't made an effect on this trend here. Quite surprising because we're seeing the dollar strengthen against the um, against the Canadian and the yen. Let's just have a look at a Aussie. It's not against the Aussie though. So against the yen and the um, uh, Canadian, uh, the US dollar showing really quite a lot of strength. But that could be an indication of how weak the other currencies are. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look to uh, get the euro USD. Let's just have a look at it on the chart here. Euro USD, which is it's at quite a low point. It stayed around that level, but against the pound, I think things are going to turn around. So we just need to um, be sensitive about how, about how we go into these. Um, the GBP USD, I think, is going to provide good opportunity. But let's just see what happens when the New York market opens. I'm just going to get these chains so that. We've got USD Canadian trends to <clears throat> to follow once we see what the US dollar does. And I think our GBP trends here are probably going to provide us a really good opportunity as well. So I'm going to everything against the US dollar here. Um, and let's just see what we can draw from this once the uh, market opens. We've got... Um, Another minute or so before that happens. Um, so I just want to see how strong really the, the pound is. It has been dominating all day, so I imagine that the, uh, the dollar will come back, come back at it somewhat. Um, and we've got just over a minute until the U.S. market opens. So, oh. so what I'm doing is uh, just. Um, I'm just getting set up the GBP USD all on 1300. Okay, so just so you know, these are the trades that I'm teeing up GBP USD and 1300 expiry times. Okay, it's up to you what uh, amounts you place on your trades. So, hopefully, that's clear to everyone what I'm doing there. Um, and let's just have a look at an M1 chart, keep an eye on this. Could be that we start getting a flood of signals, but obviously, I'm not using signals at this stage to set up my trades. As always, things are going slow, the chart's not changing. Just as we get right to the crunch point where um, these announcements are made, um, and this is really where we want to keep a close eye on things. Right, so New York's now opened. My charts are not changing on option bot. Fairly typical of that. But let's just see what occurs with this movement. Uh, USD Canadian is still rising, still rising rapidly. So this is where, let's just have a look at the results of that data. And I just want to have a look at, yeah, so these are still rising. And I have got my other focus set up to accommodate these. And I think this is going to continue to rise now. Let's just have a look here. Yeah, it certainly looks very strong, this trend. So, um, let's have a look at the unemployment claims data. So, it's just above forecast. So, these are going to continue to rise, certainly for the 
time being. You can see the Canadian dollar's dropped a little bit. Oh, it's gained a little bit against the uh, US dollar, so let's just have a look what happens here. Very odd, because look at these two charts. One of them is showing the Canadian dollar going down here. This doesn't add up at all. Look at this chart. So it's just showing that movement now. So this chart has got a delay on it. So this broker has got a delay on it. Look at this. There you go. Um, it just goes to show that you cannot just trust uh, all the brokers. Certainly the first two trading brokers. There we go. The US dollar going the other way. Let's have a look at the GBP USD. It started to gain. Uh, so I'm going to follow this pound now because I think this is how things are going to continue here. Um, the pound looking very strong today indeed. So let's see if we can capture as much of this movement as possible. As I say, the pound looking just consistently strong today. Um, we can see that against the Canadian dollar that this has gone the other way. So let's. Uh, this will move around quite a lot, bear in mind as well. I've gone in favour of the, uh, the pound there. Uh, and that's our trade to play. So hopefully everyone followed that. We've got GBP USD trades in favour of the pound. Okay, the pound looking very, very strong indeed. Look at that. Um, and also we've got USD Canadian trades actually placed in favour of the US dollar. But uh, looking at this, the, the brokers misled us slightly, I think. Um, the charts were very misleading in terms of the way they were moving. In fact, here comes the dollar back at it. So um, it may have been that I was too hasty in, these, in placing these trades because we've got the unemployment figures through. But I think this, yes, the US dollar is coming back at it. But the pound, because it's consistently strong, we just need to hold on. Maybe we should have gone with correction. Uh, very early on uh, in market opening, and if I was too hasty in these uh, decisions to place trades, I don't think I was. I think the pound will continue to gain. Obviously, just after market opening, you'll see the dollar gain a little bit, but then the pound will start to pick up again. This movement against the uh, dollar when, when it first opened shows how weak it is, um, but we have got a counter movement, and that's just kind of that's kind of just bottomed out. But it is working in favour for our. Canadian trades, which um, I feel a bit misled by one of the brokers there because it just wasn't showing a true picture of that trend on uh, UK options it was, uh, and it didn't show this movement until very late on, which is what caused me to place those trades. But anyway, they're now placed, um, we've got movement by the US dollar now uh, advancing, and I'm actually going to place this in favour of the US dollar now. It could be that uh, we need to rethink our trades because I, I was sure that the dollar would strengthen okay um, yeah well you will do Barrack yeah a slight delay on that and in fact I was a bit too hasty with these and in fact it looks now like I need to pull out of my uh, trades here I'm gonna replace these because I think we're in a position where really the, the dollar is showing a lot of strength now so um, I'm going to get these uh, cancelled, sell these positions. We don't get much for them, but it's better than losing the trades. And what I want to do is make sure that we're getting trades placed with this strong US dollar now. So sometimes we have to sort of put a test to trade in there. Um, not for everyone that, because it, it can mean that your risk is higher. But look at this, we've now got the dollar now dominating. So I'm going to get these placed in favour of the dollar instead, and this will more than make up for the uh, positions that I've had to sell there. So we can see here that the, the dollar now strengthening against the pound, which is exactly what I suppose I should have waited for in hindsight. But like all traders, um, as experienced as I am, you can be a bit hasty um, and, uh, and that sometimes costs you a little bit of money. But what it does do is shows you uh, which way you should be trading. So there we go. We've now got all those trades placed all in favour of the um, dollar. Let's hope we don't see the pound start to come back at it. Uh, at the moment, they're all looking good. The, pound, the dollar looking very strong against the Canadian, that's for sure. Um, so these trades overall looking very good for us now. So we've had to sell a few positions, all right, but um, 
what it does mean is that we've now got um, a whole bunch of positions that are in very good shape for us. Let's have a look. So we can see here all of these trends now being uh, driven by the US dollar. So hopefully you've all followed that. I've followed the US dollar on these, these trends and look how they're moving now. Really uh, absolutely solid movement by the uh, US dollar here. Uh, as you can see in both directions, looking very, very strong indeed. Um, so that will mean even though our trades, um, the trades that we had to sell, we may have lost, uh, we may have lost about $120 there in, in selling those trades, I suppose, somewhere around that region. Uh, we've more than made up for it in the profit. We'll, we'll, we'll make uh, somewhere in the region of $300 on these trades when they come in. Um, but they're still moving around quite a lot here. So we can see that the uh, the pound is not is not given up yet, but um, there is. If we look at the um, G, the GBP USD, I'm just going to show you the, the chart if I can. If it allows me to change this, it may not do. Things just going very slowly there. It's not allowing me to look at an H1 chart, which is what I wanted to do. But these are all in the green now. Um, the pound coming back at it a little bit, but I think overall the dollar will. Uh, continue to gain here. So, if I can ask who replicated my trades, I'd be grateful to know what sort of expiry times you've got, um, uh, just to see how we're all doing with those. I know, uh, Barrett, you mentioned earlier about me going very quickly. I did try and go through those as, as slowly as possible, so everyone was clear on it. Um, but, uh, but often, you know, when we're in the throes of actually making these trades, uh, we sometimes have to be quite hasty. Uh, make the decisions very quickly. Now the GBP coming back at the US dollar, is this going to hold on? These trends are extremely erratic. Uh, my option bot chart just not changing for me. So we've got to give it time. I think overall the US dollar is going to become uh, fairly strong uh, throughout this afternoon. So um, it's, uh, it's really the overall picture we're looking at. So don't worry too much at the moment. I think the US dollar will overall be the stronger currency here but we're still only eight minutes uh, after that announcement was made so the US dollar coming back again now well, I think over time we'll get this large fluctuations and then it'll settle down and they'll sit at a point and hopefully that point will be in favour of our trades which they're all looking fairly good at the moment um, as you can see so right on the verge of where they need to be there you go this one look both in the green there so um, so I replicated the GBP USD call, then couldn't sell it. Okay, yeah, Howard, that sometimes happens, but you, you should be able to go back and sell it. It doesn't matter too much. I mean, the, the amount you get back on, on selling trades is, is minimal. The important thing is that you, you then place the, the counter trade in the right direction. Okay, uh, and it's one of those things often we have to do it, especially when we're trading around um, at market opening times. Now, often the case is that we, we place a trade on a on a movement, and we have to sell it or, or place a counter trade to uh, um, uh, to make up for that. But um, we'll just keep an eye on these. Uh, I think the dollar overall, as I say, will be fairly strong. Um, yeah. Well, listen again. It come, how that comes down to uh, different brokers. You know, different brokers have different options. They offer different expiries, even different currency pairs. So this is the reason why we need a choice of different brokers. Uh, but Howard, your focus shouldn't be on selling the options anyway, because even if you've made a trade that's uh, not gone your way, the amount you get back on, on, on selling it uh, is minimal. It really is. So we should be concentrating on is getting another trade place that actually makes up for that trade not coming in. Um, uh, and at the moment, you it may still be, it depends on what point, what strike point you got, uh, it may still be that they're uh, not too badly off, but um, the, these ones now we can see that the dollar is starting to just consistently get stronger, and, uh, and these will sort of settle down, these, these larger fluctuations, and move into a point where they should all be sat in the green, and that's just what we're waiting uh, to happen here, very close to it now, and you'll see the movements become less erratic. Um, and they should settle into a position where the, the dollar is just slowly uh, gaining uh, and that's what we're looking at at the moment. So our chart here is still stuck, 
very frustrating. Um, oh, there we go. We've got it back now. So let's have a look at an H1 chart. Yeah, so there we can see um, GBP been dominating uh, throughout today. We change to an M5 chart. We'll see that. Uh, well, look how flat that is. Um, M1. Yeah, we can see that there's these huge movements um, and the pound just on the way back up again. But you'll see that those fluctuations will become less and less. And then I think you'll start to see the dollar just uh, start to gain um, slowly but surely. So hopefully we've got enough time on the trades to see that uh, that position come in. I think they'll, they'll all be perfectly all right, actually. Uh, we can see here that the US dollar is continuing to gain against the um, against the Canadian um, and what it might be worth looking at at the moment, I'm just going to change this back to M15, what it might be worth looking at at the moment is the USDJBY because we know the, the yen was weak, there we go, so we can see this US dollar movement, it's on a very erratic trend actually, but let's have a look, H1, yeah, so now the, uh, the dollar really starting to gain, you can see on an M5 chart how consistently this, this is gaining against the USDJPY. So, um, have a look at it on a broker window. We'll see that over the last four hours, yeah, this has been just a fairly steady game, apart from this point here where, um, where that announcement was made. Uh, we're seeing fairly consistent uh, movement by the US dollar now. So, uh, In a good position uh, on most of these, the pound now gaining some ground against the dollar. Unfortunately, that's not the movement we want. It does mean that our other uh, trends, there we go. So the, the Canadian starting to pull back a bit against the uh, dollar. Obviously, we backed that US dollar there. On, the, on all of these trades, so we just have to wait and see what happens. It's early days in, in terms of the trade, we've still got 17 minutes on them, so a lot can happen in that time, um, and we'll just have to see how they pan out. Um, what, uh, what I was uh, speaking about um, earlier on is that we won't be uh, having live webinars tomorrow or Monday. I'm away uh, for the weekend, I'm in, I'm in, uh, in London. Um, having meetings with um, uh, one of my uh, one of my trading uh, counterparts, uh, we just have meetings every now and then to see, you know, if we can improve the service that uh, that we're providing in terms of, you know, the, the risk we're taking with trades and how that can benefit you. So, um, call to put. How how hi Ben, how do I change? Vijaya, just explain what you mean. I don't, I don't understand the question, Vijaya. I'm sorry about that. And you can see here, look, the, the, as, I, as I predicted, um, I opened gap is as call. Well, if you've placed the trade as a call, you can't then change it to a put. You have to place another trade. Okay, and, and uh, if you can sell the original position, then sell that original position. You can see here that <clears throat> we're now seeing the, um, uh, the US dollar just sitting around the point that we need it to. So cannot close. I don't know what you mean by close. You can sell the trade. You should be able to sell the trade. But you won't get much back for it. <clears throat> You're better off just placing the trade in the other direction. Do it fairly soon because here we, here we can see now that the dollar really is starting to gain. So this is what I was waiting for. And here we go. It's taken off now, which is exactly what I predicted it would do. And now we've got all of our trades in the green, <clears throat> which is exactly what we wanted. Good to see there. So we've got eight trades placed, all in the green, and that means that we're going to see uh, somewhere in the region of $300, $350 profit. Um, 
Yeah, you have to sell it, Vijaya. You have to sell it or wait for it to expire. Yeah, but if you've copied my trades, I don't know why you're trying to sell it. Anyway, if you, I don't know whether you've gone in favour of the, the US dollar or you've not told me what the trade is. Um, so if you tell me, I, maybe I can shed some light on it. Uh, but um, yeah, we're looking at somewhere in the region of $360 profit minus the, uh, well, about $100 we lost in, um, in selling trades. So we're still looking at somewhere in the region of $250 profit. Um, with the, uh, we made about $120 this morning, so we're still somewhere close to $363.80 profit for today. So not bad at all. And as we can see here, the dollar really taking off now and starting to establish its ground. Um, if we look at an M1 chart on the USDJPY, we're probably in a position where we could even get some more trades placed. Bear in mind, the only reason we're not getting signals on these, well, some of them haven't got turned on. But the, uh, if we look at the GBP USD, which has been uh, dominant all day, let's have a look at an M1 chart. We can see this is now being driven down. All right, but because I didn't have it on M15, that's why we're not seeing. Uh, here we go. Here comes some signals. The so USD consistent gain against the uh, uh, USD Canadian, and that is really where the uh, the main opportunities lie. I think. Look at that. That really is. Um, fairly consistent uh, dominance of this Canadian dollar. Look at that. So still rising. Um, we're seeing, there we go, another signal confirming that that's still going up. So if you want to play trades at the moment, um, then uh, this USD Canadian, look, we're getting signals confirming the movement on this. Obviously, we've got our trades placed. That is the one to be following. Um, look at that movement still consistently rising. We look on an M5 chart. That is a very dominant movement indeed. So we're now in a good position for all of these trades to come in. So hopefully you've managed to capitalise on that. Uh, is there any questions for me? Can anyone give me some feedback on whether they've managed to uh, place the same trades as me? They should all be in the green if you have. Uh, we're in a very good position for all of our trades now. Uh, we're looking at 100% success rate today on the trades we've placed. We did have to sell a few. Uh, so that meant that we uh, dropped a little bit of profit, but we're still going to finish up somewhere around $250 in, uh, in profit here, a bit more than that. So, uh, so a good afternoon. So has anyone got any questions while I'm here? No? Okay. Because often I get feedback afterwards saying that I'm going too fast, you didn't understand something, or what did I mean, uh, you know, at so and so point. Uh, the thing is, unless you ask me while we're on the webinars, it's very difficult for me to help you. What, what about the GBP USD, Barrett? It, well, yes, look, I've got GBP <coughs> USD placed here. It's in the green on all of them, look. All in the green here, 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 and here. I've followed the uh, US dollar, as you can see, and all of these are in the money. It's kind of levelling out now. So, do you mean good to place a trade now? Right, no, it isn't, because you've waited for, well, I place these trades at 12.35. It may still, it probably will still carry on going down, but you've not, you've not um, benefited from the movement that I have. So, bear in mind these trades have been placed for 15 minutes now. Um, I would think it will still carry on going down, so you're probably good for a trade if you place 30 minute trade on it. We'll have a look at the GBP USD. The thing is, uh, the the pound has been dominant all day, so the chances are there we go. Yeah, this is still going down fairly consistently, Barrett. So um, obviously, uh, if you place the trades now, they're going to be different to mine. Um, mine are in a, a far more accelerated position than yours, but I would say yes, it's a high probability these trades will still be okay if you back the US dollar. Okay. Uh, it's a shame you didn't place them when I placed mine. Um, obviously, we saw a lot of movement, but you get much better expiry times if you're placing, if you're predicting these movements before they happen. Um, and that's the whole point of, of sort of going through with uh, with me is that hopefully you can place the trades uh, much earlier. Uh, so, so Barak, I did explain what trades I'd placed. I explained that just after I'd placed them, which was 15 minutes ago now. So, um, yeah, hopefully anyone else 
uh, watching managed to capitalize on that and copy those trades. Um, and of course, the USD Canadian, which is still looking consistently strong now. So did anyone else replicate my trades? Or more to the point, did anyone else not understand what I was going through? Okay, Wong, so hopefully, okay, well that's good. So all of your trades should be in the green now, are they Wong? Yeah, perfect. Raphael, Matt, how, how, how are yours looking? Okay, good. But did you sell all the calls? Hopefully you didn't sell the USD Canadian calls. Yo, I didn't place any trades. Yeah, the GBP, the GBP call trade. Oh, okay, Matt, no problem. The GBP call trade I sold with Jaya. So the ones that are um, are, are giving given us the results are the ones where we back the US dollar. I've got eight of those placed, and you can see I'm just going to go through them again and just show you that every single one of these is in the green now. Okay, and uh, the thing you'll notice here is that I'm getting signals that are confirming that uh, on our um, on our software as well. So the software is confirming what I've predicted. You can see that these are, are now in a, a very good position. They're all looking like they're coming in. In fact, the USD is still moving in our favour. Uh, so it's just giving us a, great, a greater comfort zone. Excellent, Brian. So all green for you as well. So um, you do sometimes have to place trades uh, and you'll you make mistakes, but it's reacting to those mistakes um, and sort of countering them, I suppose, and placing the trades in the right direction that's going to give you the overall results. Um, so uh, if we do that, as long as we react quick enough, um, we don't just sit on them, uh, then we can rectify those, um, those, those mistakes. Uh, and I can tell you now, you're never going to go through uh, your trades and just get successful trades. It just doesn't happen. You're going to place some. If you react to them quick enough, you should be able to use them to your advantage and they should guide uh, the, the trades to make sure that you understand uh, the ones that you've got to place to get the money in. Uh, and that's exactly what we've done here. Uh, so Vijaya, uh, so Brian, excellent. Uh, Vijaya, if you, someone asked me, who asked me about placing trades now? Was that you, Barak? I think you asked me about placing the GBP USD. I recommended that, uh, or I said it was a high probability that it would uh, continue to gain. Indeed, it is doing that. So Barak, did you place those trades? Okay, perfect. So they should all be in the green for you now as well, are they? Perfect. Joy, uh, can I ask why you trust the Euro USD more than the GBP USD? It shouldn't make too much difference actually. If the US dollar is very strong, it will be strong about uh, against both of those currencies. But the reason why I was placing uh, the, uh, I had more but when are we talking about, Joy? Are we talking about today or any time? Right. But today, if you look at the strength of the pound today, look, let me just show you. This is the GBP USD chart, yeah? Let me show you on an H1 chart. The, the pound has been so strong today, all right? Look at that movement, and that was because of the retail sales figures. Let's have a look at the GBP, uh, the Euro GBP, and you'll see why I was back in the pound. Okay, that's why. Okay, this is why I know uh, that the, um, the the US dollar would be stronger against the pound is because the pound has been so dominant today. Uh, the movement hasn't been so significant. If you look at the Euro USD, all right, it is now because the Euro the US dollar's got very much stronger. But overall. The, uh, the movement, there we go, on an H1 chart, hasn't been as significant on the Euro USD. Does, does that make sense? Okay, so because of this extreme movement by the pound throughout today, I've used the, uh, uh, the US dollar counter movement uh, when the unemployment claims were are released to, to make those trades against the pound. Does that make sense? Yeah, so 
what I'm using is an overall picture of how strong the euro and the pound have been against the dollar today as well. And, and the, the pound has been much stronger, and that means there's more chance of a, a reactive uh, movement by the US dollar when it opens, okay? If it's in a more extreme position, the US dollar has got more chance of giving us a successful trade when it, when it turns, which it now has, all right? So that, that's what I'm using. I'm just using a bigger picture there rather than just concentrating on... You, you can't relate... You can't use, uh, uh, you know, the market conditions now um, uh, to, 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 well, sorry, you can't use the market conditions that you've had in, on other days to affect how you place your trades today. They're never the same. Yeah. So, um, so no, the, the GBP, the GBP is getting weaker now. Okay. You, you, you need to understand that the pound is now getting weaker. It's been strong all day. It's now getting weaker. So if that's what you mean by it's going down, all right, then uh, then yes, correct. This trend is going down because the dollar, yeah, GBP USD put, yeah, absolutely, because the dollar's now strengthening against it. But bear in mind, Vijaya, that you're placing these trades at a much later point to me. So I've, I've my trades are in a far more accelerated position. I've used a lot of the movement to my advantage. So we're now in a position where it's highly unlikely these trades are going to come back, even if there's a turn of movement. Okay. Um, yeah, they will join. The different pairs are, have much more volatility than others. You know, it's why uh, some of the, the pairs we we simply don't trade. If we look at the the USD uh, ruble, for instance, we we, we don't trade that uh, because it's it's very erratic. So uh, so yes, we of course we have. Uh, different pairs have different levels of volatility, so this is uh, where we have to be a bit more careful, uh, a bit more selective with the uh, with the pairs we're placing trades on. Okay, um, all confused how to close open positions. You, all you can do is sell them, Vijaya. Yeah, um, I know. And the important thing is to get the counter trades placed, and then go back and see if you can sell those positions. Believe me. You, the, the money that you make back from selling those positions is not going to be anywhere near what you make uh, uh, placing the the, uh, the correct trades. Okay, so make sure you're focusing on placing the trades first, then go back and see if you can sell the positions. Okay, um, just uh, you know for future reference. Don't worry too much about it this time. Hopefully you've now got trades that are all in a good position for you, uh, as mine are. So uh, we've had a good afternoon here, and uh, I think we've used. Uh, few methods of, of sort of cancelling some trades and, and placing them in opposite directions which which is often necessary to get the results the overall results that you want okay but we can see all of these in very good position now um, and we are one minute away from um, if you sell it will not accept yeah some will some won't uh, Vijay that's down to broker discretion all right uh, we can see here that the US dollar is still gaining against the pound so I think going forward this afternoon uh, we should be in a position where we can start to follow this strength of the US dollar, which um, certainly against the European currencies, uh, the euro and the, and the pound, uh, we're in a, in a very strong position to follow this. Um, just make sure you're placing the trades with enough time on them. Don't place shorter trades that you know can um, you can get caught out by fluctuations in those trends. Uh, but overall, I think this pound is going to, sorry, the dollar is going to continue to strengthen. So you probably want uh, your uh, your US dollar pairings turned on, set them to 10 pips uh, and M15, somewhere around that, keeping on the signals and also, more importantly, keeping on these trends. You can see here that the uh, the US dollar is in a very good position against the, right, so here we go. I'm just going to go through and uh, we'll have a look at our expired positions here. Um, so we should be in a, a pretty good position on all of these now, so I uh, just want to go through, have a look, but just going back to this, well we can see here the GBP is getting weaker against other currencies as well now, so we can take advantage of the pounds weakening as well, um, but we can see here on an M1 chart, which I just wanted to show you, how um, uh, strong the US dollar is against the Euro as well. So make sure those US, uh, US dollar pairings are turned on, and you should be in a position where you can take advantage of those. Let's see if we can have a look at our um, 
It's not letting me have a look at my expired positions here, which is quite frustrating. Uh, this one is, um, it's not showing today. Let's have a look. I think my brokers are, they need refreshing, unfortunately. This is quite frustrating. So that one says it's sold. Uh, that one was from this morning. So I need to refresh these broker windows, unfortunately, just to show you the results. But you saw that they all came in, uh, I'm sure. Um, let's just see if we can have a look here. Yeah, that one was sold. Their position from this morning. So I'm just going to go through and see if I can uh, refresh these broker windows uh, and just show you the results we got there. So you'll see, yeah, so, okay, I don't really need to show you the results because you can see for yourself that, um, uh, that they've come in and that's good feedback. So did everyone else's trades come in as well? And get some feedback on that, that would be great. No, uh, Vijay, no, tomorrow I'm in, I'm in London tomorrow, I fly back on Monday. So we won't have webinars tomorrow or Monday. Any of you that, that are paying for webinars, uh, obviously we will add on the extra. Um, good, so good results there. Um, so yeah, we'll add on the extra, okay? So please don't worry about on webinars. We'll, we'll make sure that you are uh, um, that you get the, the full allocation of the month's webinars. We'll just add, add some on. I am going to be starting to run um, later webinars as well as of next week. Uh, so there we go. There's a GBP USD. Um, that one was sold. There we go. So we can see here we've got the GBP USD. Uh, that position was in the money. The USD Canadian in the money, and of course the one that we sold there. So I'll just go through. Let me see if I can open all of these to give you an idea of the results. All right. I don't usually go through in this much detail, but it's worth doing so that you can everyone can see this. Um, so there we go. The put uh, and the call. Those ones, uh, and then that one that was sold. Okay, so we can see here, um, good profit on those ones as well. Option rally, let's just have a look. Uh, and what I want to do is just have a look at our UK options as well. Um, so yeah, all came in, good. Glad uh, you got good results there, Raphael. It's good to know, and I'm um, glad you all did, actually. That's a, it's a, it's a good afternoon for us. Um, and bearing in mind that I'm not going to be here uh, tomorrow, it's a good uh, a good note to go off on. All right, so we'll just have a look at the. Um, just going to have a look at the other ones here, so we can see the results from that. And then our UK options account here. So one sold and one. So we can see these all these positions here. So of course we've got that sold trade run. Every single broker we've got good results there. So. Uh, so it's good afternoon. So hopefully you all managed to uh, take advantage of that. I think most of you did, um, and we're in a very good position there um, for uh, this afternoon's webinar. So just uh, the final broker here, just to, to show you. So we've got put uh, our sold position there, and then that one as well. So good afternoon. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad you all made uh, good profit this afternoon. Um, I'll be back on Tuesday, um, but my Trader Insights will be going up uh, as usual. Uh, if you've got any questions, please uh, get them over to me. I'll try and reply to you on Skype, many of you got me connected on Skype. If you want any more information, nxe.com. I can make sure I can keep you updated with uh, training programs, live events, anything else that we're doing. Thanks for joining me.